Holly Cotton here, and I am joined today with Chris Noble, and Chris is actually the Director of Corporate and Community Services. Yes, I had to practice that two times to say that title. And <laughs> Chris is the Director of Corporate and Community Services of The Rose, which is a breast center organization, and she's here, and she's going to talk all about everything that's going on with The Rose and give us some information and also give us some information about breast cancer, some of the resources, all of that great stuff. So welcome, Chris. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate being able to spread the word because we we need to do that. We need to do that. Um, that I have that fabulous title, but really, I just go around the city of Houston and make friends for the Rose. As many friends as I can get, because each one of those friends, I have told the mission and sent them out to find more girls. Unfortunately, yeah, un unfortunately, um, we, we have seen more women in 2022 who needed our help, meaning they didn't have health insurance or they were underinsured, than the last two decades. That would be 20 years. You know, that's post pandemic. So many women lost their jobs or lost their insurance because the company could no longer afford it, those sorts of things. And so that's just given us an increased amount of women coming to us needing help, which means we need help helping them. And uh, every year we do about 40,000 mammograms. Eight to 10,000 of those are uninsured women. But that number is the the number of insured women is now going to decrease, and the number of uninsured is now going to increase. So we really need all the help we can get to help the women of Houston and the surrounding areas. We really do. All right, so that is so awesome, Chris. And I, everyone that follows me should already know because I am a huge breast cancer advocate. I'm also a breast cancer survivor. And one of the reasons why I love the rose is because I know when I was diagnosed with cancer, fortunately for me, I did have private health insurance and my surgeries and my, um, and my, um, my reconstruction, everything, of course, was paid for by my insurance. But as I started meeting people and I became like an advocate, I realized that a lot of people didn't have health insurance. A lot of women were, especially minority women, were getting treatments later. Um, so they were having, you know, worse outcomes from surgery so or whatever from their treatment because they weren't having that those annual mammograms and, and things like that. So I love that the Rose is helping the uninsured people. Can you tell us about some of the things that you guys do? So if I'm a woman and I don't have insurance and I'm like, oh my goodness, I need a mammogram or what happens for me after if I do find a lump on the mammogram? Can you tell us about some of the things that the Rose does to help those women? Sure, sure. Um, we have what are called sponsored mammograms because they're funded from various places, some of which the un the insured woman. We, rather than free, we, we prefer to call them sponsored because they are sponsored by something. And basically that uninsured woman has to qualify because all of those organizations want to give it to the people who really need it. I mean, there are some people who are uninsured but can afford to pay $250 for a mammogram. Uh, if that woman is, uh, is, is that particular woman who, who could afford to pay for the mammogram is diagnosed, we can still help her get treatment because the threshold for treatment is different than the threshold for getting that mammogram, according to the groups who provide us funds. Uh, if you're an uninsured woman and you qualify, we take care of getting the mammogram, the ultrasound, the biopsy. We'll ex go with you to your doctor's office. We'll help you explain it to your family. Anything you need, you are matched with a patient navigator from then on. All the way through treatment, through reconstruction if you choose that. And then we stay in contact with you for the next five years just to make sure everything is still going strong. Um, 
we, we do things like help you with food, help you with gas. We're, we, we have affiliations with some lo other local nonprofits who help women going through breast cancer or cancer. And that we reach out to them if they can help. One of those is Angels Surviving Cancer, or as I call them, My Angels, because my angels swoop in like angels and help women taking the kid to soccer. I mean, mom's going through breast cancer treatment. She can't drive the kid to soccer, those sorts of things. And there are other organizations, Beauty Beyond Breast Cancer. There are some other ones that, that help us help those other women. And then there are state and federal programs that we we do the paperwork. Work. We know what to do to get them that treatment. That's that uninsured woman. Yeah, okay, it's a, it, it's a lot. It is. It is. And I would just like to say, so I am ten years now as a breast oh, cancer wow. survivor. So, so ten years ago, there I feel like there were not all of the things that they have now. And right. I always tell people like that, that was really why my mission was to start coming out here, making a change, being an advocate, being a voice to show life after cancer and also raising awareness because once people started kind of supporting my, what I was doing and supporting me, it allows me to be able to bring a highlight to mm -hmm. all these other things. And that was definitely it. There was this huge gap, like you said, I couldn't go do the things I always like. That's one of my biggest guilt things that I feel when I was going through my recovery was the, the way I couldn't be the mom that I wanted to be. I felt like I couldn't do homework. I couldn't do, I wasn't invested. I, I mean, it took me three months to get my life back together, you know? So yeah. I really, really, it's very commendable that they have yeah. all of these things now for women I mean, stuff right. that I would have loved. Yeah, take my kid to soccer so I don't have to crawl out of the bed <laughs> and go do it. <laughs> yeah. And there were so yeah. Many, yeah. And there were so many yes. times like I didn't feel like cooking or I just didn't have the energy to cook. Mm -hmm. And so I sure. love I love that. And I'm gonna have you um sure. at the end give us all of those resources as well yes. for people to support yeah. them too. Um right. so one of the things so I wanted go ahead. I was just gonna, ten years ago. So you were diagnosed how old? 36. Yeah. Uh, yeah. When you said that, I just want to make sure we point that out. 36. Women under 40 are getting diagnosed. When I started at the Rose 11 years ago, we were seeing women in their 30s be diagnosed. We're now diagnosing girls in their 20s. Just like we were in the yes. 30s. Yeah. Look at your young face and I think, yeah, you were a young woman. And you probably had to fight for the fact that you had breast cancer. That you had this lump. Yeah, I it did. wasn't just nothing. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Oh, no, I was in there. You're not supposed to have thing. breast cancer, girl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. You're not supposed to have that. <laughs> the thing that really yeah. saved me is because I am a nurse. So ah, I kind of go. had that inside loop. So I was like, uh uh, it's time for me to be a, my own patient advocate because right. I know how you guys do us. <laughs> Yes, 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 yes. I'm not gonna, yes. I'm not gonna oh, allow yes. that. But that is mm -hmm. so crazy. I can't even imagine 20 year olds being diagnosed. That is just surreal. I know, I know, I know. Um, but hey, if anyone asks Chris, I'm still 36 now. So roll with 36. <laughs> okay, she's still 36. <laughs> just put a hold yeah. on her. <laughs> Yeah. Until, people start, until people start questioning that I'm not 36, I'm going to go up to 37. But until then, just roll <laughs> with it. I'm still 36. I know, I, I'm, I'm, hang, I'm hanging into 65, which I saw a long time ago. But I'm, I'm, you, yeah, I'm good. I would, I, I, I would give you 55. So, um, <laughs> Thank you. I'm 55. <laughs> So one of the things that I wanted to just kind of highlight also is that there are certain breast cancer organizations and they're more about the research and the treatments. And the thing I think that differentiates the rows from those other big corporations or whatever they're, I don't know mm -hmm. what they're licensed under, but you know, like the big ones that everyone thinks yes. they have to donate if they have cancer to. So the rows, I want to just highlight that you guys are actually doing the things because yes. I can go and I can donate to Susan G. Coleman, mm -hmm. run the race. But when I needed any kind of assistant, Susan G. Coleman wasn't the one that was going to give it to me. They do research, yeah. education, mm -hmm. 
treatment, that sort of stuff. So can you just kind of explain to us, like when people ask you those questions, because I know they probably say the same thing to you. They're probably like, so you guys are like Susan G. Komen or, <laughs> you know, or what do y'all do? Mm -hmm. Can you yeah, explain yeah. just for anyone that just listens to this one little part, how you guys differentiate yourself as the actual doer organization compared to just research. Right. Um, basically, one of the easiest ways is, is in years, past years, I'm not sure that the last few years, Susan G. Komen gave money to us. They were a funder of us. So if they're funding us, we don't do the same things. Um, American Cancer Society at some point funds, funded us over the years. So though they, that's one big di differentiation. The other is we are what is called a breast center of excellence, which is the highest rank you can get. It's given by the American Radiology Association. And there are 12 of them in Houston. One of them's MD Anderson, one's Methodist, one's The Rose, and then the others. So we, that differentiate, differentiates us because we're a breast center of excellence. These other organizations are fundraisers and funding organizations. And we actually perform the things that they're raising money for. Yeah. Did that make sense? Yes. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, no, that's no. That's basically the difference. I try to make it pretty simple. You know, <laughs> it's pretty simple. And, um, and we, we work with other organizations to help that woman go through the breast cancer and that, you know, and we, we set them up and we, uh, one example is we, um, we diagnosed a young woman in her twenties. This has been several years ago in her twenties. She was diagnosed basically by Ben Taub when she was brought in because her boyfriend beat her up. Two kids living in a shelter, breast cancer, 30, barely 30, 32 years old. And so we knew that if we didn't get her extra help other than treatment, she wasn't going to make it because she's in a shelter. So that's one of the, one of the organizations we called Angels Surviving Cancer. They came in and helped her. She's had, she was breast cancer free for a while. She's had a second bout. Now she's good for two kids. I can't believe how grown they are. And she's in her own apartment. So that's, that's more of what we do when we help that person through through the treatment and then after the treatment to make sure they can get back on solid ground. Okay. I love, I, I, I love that. I'm telling yeah. you, I, first of yeah. all, I'm yeah. so sad <laughs> that I didn't know all, all of this. And I'm sad that I, I didn't have those resources for, um, for when I was going through my, my journey, because that all mm -hmm. of that stuff is definitely would have been beneficial. Uh, and I yes. think also just in the last 10 years, just the, the surplus of knowledge, more access to, to the resources, more access to, uh, to physicians. I, I think like when I got diagnosed and this is like, I'm in, in Houston, when I got diagnosed, it was like, Oh, you got to go to MD hand, uh, MD Anderson, or you have to, or, or, and I had like three surgeons that they gave me to choose from. And I was like, oh, okay. Um, and now there's like an influx of all of this. Uh, the cancer centers mm -hmm. have grown, um, you know, where there's people yeah. that are moving to Houston just to work at those cancer centers. So I, I think wow. I love that you guys are doing that. Now, another question about uh, about the center or, or whatnot. So do you guys actually have a building if someone can just come in off the street or how does it work if I do have, if I do want your resources, how do I get yeah. access to it? We have two brick and mortar locations, two offices. One is off the loop at Bel Air Boulevard. And then the other is 45 and the Beltway. That's our headquarters, 45 and the Beltway. And basically you just call, I don't even know if I have that number, but I'll find it in a second. You call, you call and make an appointment. You can make one online. I know that we are in the process of upgrading and doing more with our, with our online process. So I would make a phone call rather than trying to do the online. Um, and then we have soon to be five motor coaches, mobile motor coaches that go all over Houston. And then we have one that's housed in Lufkin. 
because the ladies living in small rural communities have no place to get a mammogram. And so that one is housed in Lufkin so it can make those trips to East Texas and Central, to, you know, those, those sorts of things. But we're soon to get our fifth. We, that, those mobile units go to businesses and school districts, somewhere where the, where the women are there Monday through Friday. They just have to go down the hall outside, get in the, get in the, the van and or the mobile unit and have their mammogram. So, it, but all of that just needs to be um, coordinated. If, if it's at, your, at the school, there's somebody there in the school who's coordinating the, the appointments. We can't do just walk-ups like giving blood because we, we need doctor's orders. Lots of women who are uninsured don't go to the doctor. I'll tell you about that in a minute. Um, we, we need to verify your insurance if you're insured or verify you qualify for one of our sponsored mammograms. So it's not a walk-up situation. Over the 37 years we've been given mammograms, we know that we keep losing women who call in, don't have a doctor. We give them some, some names of some clinics they can go to get the doctor's orders, and they never call back. In the last few years, we figure it's like 1,500 women we're losing every year. So um, we now have on staff a nurse practitioner. And so she will give that uninsured woman the exam, the orders, and then she can go get her mammogram. And that was like a piece we were missing. So we have that piece now so that those women don't fall to the wayside. Because those are the ones who need us the most, more than likely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's cool. That's cool. Yes. That was I'm always, fine. I mean, that's the hardest thing in, in the medical field is always the non-compliant. <laughs> like, right, right, right. Like you can only do yeah. so much, but then right. you have to you have to have that that accountability. Now you have to follow up on that yourself. So I'm right. glad that you guys do have yeah. have I mean, those those things. We're a um, pretty big organization. Our 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 annual budget is about fifteen million dollars. We have over a hundred staff in those units, and you know, so it's not just a small entity. Yeah. Right. And I was going to ask you that too. Are you guys only, uh, like, do you guys only service, uh, people in Texas? So if someone yes. calls you, okay. Yes. All right. So that's yes. it. Okay. Got it. We and sometimes so we go as far as sometimes as Corpus Christi. Okay. Yep, Got somebody, it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Just curious because, you know, if anyone's listening yeah. to, um, do you guys partner, like, is there a, a, a national partnership that the Rose is part of. So if anyone is like uh, watching or listening to this episode, but they live in Detroit, <laughs> is there like a nationwide <laughs> bank of, are you like, not are you part that of I know of. Okay. No, not that I know of. So not they would I just have of. to look to see what kind of resources are in their own state or city. Yes. yes. Okay, there is, got it, got it. to my knowledge, there's no one that has that model, the insured help the uninsured. No one has that model that I know of. Okay. Mm, yeah. Okay. Okay. And so I know that you are always asked about statistics. And I know we were talking earlier about how you said that there were some 20 year olds there. Can you give us some of like the, the common uh, facts or the, the statistics sure. that you guys give yeah. about the instances of, of reoccurrence, mm -hmm. of currents, all of that, just, just so people can understand why this is yeah. such an important cause. I think it's close to a half, that's 400,000, 500,000 women and a few men are diagnosed in the United States every year. 85% um, of those folks don't have it in their family. A lot of times we think that because we don't have a history of that, we don't have to worry about it. That's not, that is not the case. 85% don't have it in their family, which is a huge number. A black woman living in Houston, Texas, every other woman that dies of breast cancer is black. Every other woman. Not because it's, it's all late diagnosis. It's basically late diagnosis. Um, what other statistics can I give you? Men represent 
However, it's slightly on the rise and it's more prevalent in black men. There was just a, a walk held a couple of weeks ago to raise awareness for the health of black men. And, and so the Rose had a presence there about male breast cancer. Um, yeah, I spend most of my time speaking in the African-American community. And a few, I guess it was last month, I was going to be in a um, couple of Hispanic neighborhoods speaking at some health fairs. And I thought, let me look up some statistics because I really didn't have any statistics in my head. Well, this one was pretty interesting. Latino, Hispanic women living in the United States have 20% more likelihood to have breast cancer than their counterparts in their home country. Wow. That's an interesting. And, and, yeah. yeah. I mean, I had never. N yes. And it's well, and that's that's a population you could you could kind of measure. Yes. And I've told that to several people. And, and the first thing I thought of was food. Right. Well, you would think coming to America would be healthier. We're supposed to be the Western medicine. Everything here is so great. <laughs> yeah, but if, if they can't afford care, you know, and it, you know, and it's, 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 it's food. It's what's put in, our, you know, what we put in our food. Yeah. Sometimes when I speak, I talk about, um, you know, the, the tablecloth that they put something in it so it doesn't wrinkle. Do we know that that's not, we don't, we don't know because we we only figure it out after so many people are stricken with some sort of cancer. So kind of after the fact. Mm -hmm. The other thing is um, their environments are a little more pristine than ours. Everybody doesn't have a car. Lots of people walk. You know, the, some of those, some of those, and then and then there's lots of fruits and vegetables that are sort of eaten. So it's, I think it's interesting that those two that that comparison. Um, yeah. And, and there's so many food deserts in, in Houston where, where people that live in an area don't have a grocery store they can go to and get fresh fruit, you know, and, and it's true. You know, I've been in those areas and I'm thinking, we're going to go to an H-E-B. There's no H-E-B. Right. <laughs> it's interesting. It's interesting. So I think a lot of it is the food. What other statistics? Um, usually I have some, I can't even think of any more. But um, well, I mean, I think that's that I, gives us an idea. I just wanted to yeah, just have just some, just some risk factors or whatever. Yeah, but I, yeah, that was definitely good information. Um, didn't want to mean me risk, to put you yeah. on the spot there, like that's okay. you were. Sometimes I have to think, but but risk factors. Um, risk factor. First of all, the number one risk factor is you're a woman and you're getting older. I mean, aging, being female and aging is is we can't do anything about it, but it becomes a risk factor. Um, it, your diet being, ob if you're overweight, stress is a huge one. And how much stress we all been in the last three years. I tell women, please find something that de-stresses you besides shopping and do a lot of it, <laughs> you know, and, and then smoking. I know several people that during the pandemic that started to smoke, you know, and we all put on a few pandemic pounds. Those are some really big and lack of exercise really big things and it's not really just breast cancer that's health and cancer and heart issues all of that you can those risk factors but we you know we're not the healthiest healthiest country in the world when it comes to those kinds of things yeah. right right well as a nurse and a wellness coach well, i'm you know, totally yeah. aware <laughs> yeah, i talk about i'm yeah. also a trainer so i, I yeah so i yeah. know it, i'm always yeah teaching about all of that stuff all of that yeah. um okay and so it's difficult one yeah. the, yes and no one wants to listen difficult. or follow directions no. um yeah. so, so okay yes. so i know that you guys do like a lot of events as well in the community ways to get exposure also ways if if people maybe don't donate financially on the website you guys do have events um like the event that you have coming up where people can come out and instead of just giving something a, a, a monetary donation they can actually do something so can you tell us about the event that you guys have coming up this weekend yes there are uh, about 30 artists who are opening up their studios to sell their art and they will have some of their art 
with a percentage going to the Rose. Won't be every piece in their studio, but some of the art going to the Rose. And they've also all donated one piece that would sell for under $100. So there'll be a pop-up studio. I will have some of my my art there, and it'll be under, under $45, $45 and less. I started painting during the pandemic and haven't stopped yet. So, but it's at the silos at Sawyer Yard, 150, what is it? 1502 Sawyer, 1502 from noon to five. Come, I think we have rosé wine and sip and see. And and even if even if you don't buy any art, sipping and seeing and looking at it is helping to support the rose. And you may learn a little bit about it. I'll be there with some of my buddies talking about the rose as we're walking folks to the studio and to get their their ship or their their wine and that sort of stuff. So it, it should be fun. It's really in October, which is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Many, many, many organizations and groups of folks do fundraisers for us. Most Octobers, the donations accumulate to about a half a million dollars that others raise for us. From poker tournaments, we have one organization that jumps out of airplanes to raise funds for us. And just, you name it. Anything you could possibly do to get, get funds raise funds for an organization schools kids kids raise, sometimes the kids raise raise funds for for breast cancer awareness month so yeah that's that's one of the things that happens in october and uh, i'm available available to speak anytime i can speak for five minutes or five days whatever whatever you want and i try to make it interesting i try to make it fun my granddaughter gave me a pink tambourine, so I begin all of all of my yep. I begin all of my talks with my pink tambourine, and then give it to others so that they can cheer me on as I'm talking about breast cancer. So, anything to be memorable and pay attention because you never know what this gray-haired lady will do. <laughs> right. I love that. I love the tambourine. Thing. I know. That is so cool. Yes. Cause it's like, hello, yes. pay attention right uh -huh. here. Uh -huh. I'm here. I've come to, to talk and you know, and it's a little, you know, it's, breast cancer is a hard thing to talk about, mm -hmm. especially if you were, you, you had, or someone you love had it who, who passed. I mean, it's a hard subject. So I try to add a little bit of humor in it. And I have, I have a couple of humorous ways to do your breast exam and, <laughs> You know, just to, you know, give it a little levity, but it's very, it's critical that you pay attention to what they look like. I mean, I, mm -hmm. you know, I tell the girls in their, in their teens, when I, t sometimes I talk to teens, I said, just look at them. If they look different than they looked yesterday, go tell mom. And that's really the right. same for, for like, there's, you, you do need to do a self-exam, but it's just as important just to look at them. Just, you know, just. And if they're different this week than last week, for whatever reason, yeah, yeah. Okay, I love that. And it's so funny because I, I was going to have a question at the end, and I was going to say, can you give us one, one wrap up what you're saying with one piece of advice for anyone that's listening? And I think you just said it. Look at them. <laughs> yeah. Just look at them. I mean, yes. Now you should do a little bit more than that, but, but yeah, don't. Yeah. And yeah, just look at them, pay attention to what they're, you know, what your body's doing. And, um, there is a breast cancer that's a rash. So it's not something that a lot of people would necessarily, necessarily, uh, think that it was, but it's, it looks like a rash mm -hmm. and, uh, the, the, the amazing thing, and you, as a nurse, you know this, we've prayed and prayed and prayed for a cure. We kind of have one. It's called early detection. With uh, 3D mammography, we can now diagnose it at stage zero, stage one, which are 100% curable without radiation, without chemo, a, you know, a, a blip in your life. But you have to keep going every year and getting that screening mammogram. And looking at them. To, right. You know. Well, I just think that, 
and I just think that even though, you know, it, it sounds funny to say it and we make it lighthearted, but mm -hmm. with, with just what you said at the beginning, there are women that are coming in, in their twenties that are already being diagnosed. Like you said, we're not just starting off at stage one, we're starting off at stage zero. So this is a serious topic. And, and I tell people, especially whenever, like you said, October, everyone comes out the woodworks to, to support breast cancer. But guess what? I have people, I had someone, she just sent me a, a, a DM on Instagram last month. Well, guess what? She, she, she did, you know, she's still going through something in, in April and March. She's not going through something in, De in, in October. So this is a 12 month, 365 day process. It's not just just because it's October is awareness month. These are corporations. These are organizations, all of these, like you said, the, I'm going to have you list some of their names again, just to, for anyone who didn't hear it before, but there are all of these resources to help people 365 days a year, not just in October. So just to wrap up, Chris, give us a name um, a website name, spell it for anyone that's listening to just the audio. So spell out the website. Sure. And then also, if you want to, um, if you want to include any of the other organizations yeah. that you work with, yeah. that you want people yeah. to support as well, list those sure. names as well so that we can look them up and find them. Gotcha. Um, it's the Rose and our email or our website is therose.org and um right now we are posting these uh what are they called video no not videos podcasts i'm trying to get in the podcast and that's so what you're on you right now chris listen. yeah i i'm doing it again and and there are podcasts and there are interesting podcasts i have one the, 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 I think mine is the seventh, but the, the second one is, um, you need to go listen to Elena Marks. It will send chills up your spine, What the, the health of women in Texas, how, how, how we're not taken seriously with our health. Anyway, it's therose.org. You can always reach me at cnoble at therose.org. And um, the, I want to give the phone number. The main number is 281 484 Four seven zero eight. That's the main number, and my number is two eight one six one five eight eight four three. If you're scared to go, I'll go with you. I've done that for about a half a dozen women so far, and 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 uh, I'm happy to go. I'm happy to meet you there and be with you. That's not a problem. Some of the organizations that help me are Angels Surviving Cancer. You can find them on on the internet. Beauty Beyond Breast Cancer. The TSU has a whole breast cancer uh, initiative going on, and they have some funding, and they're doing some really great things there at TSU. And you, it's TSU Breast Breast Information. I think you can just do the, Google that, and you'll find it. Um, that's you know, those are the ones that come to mind. If you need anything, you can always reach out to me, and I can send you stuff. I and uh, if I can answer questions, I'm not a medical professional, but I can get you to one. <laughs> and uh, and um, I'm just happy to spread spread the word. I'm now getting uh, emails saying, please come and speak to us and bring your tambourine. So it's all good. You know, it's all good. <laughs> Yeah. I love that. I love that. And, and don't worry for you guys. Um, I also in the podcast notes. So if you are listening to this on any of the Apple podcast, Spotify, iHeartRadio, whatever, just look in the podcast notes. I'll actually have clickable links, uh, contact information. All of that will be in the podcast notes also. Mm -hmm. So, cause I know sometimes people are driving and yeah. you know, we don't want them to, yeah. um, be, uh, <laughs> <laughs> writing no, and drive. Drive. So don't worry just read the notes they'll actually be in there so yeah, it was that. so nice to talk to you chris i love what you're doing i love I, i'm yeah. gonna have to come stalk one of the events that you're speaking at so yes, yes, uh, yes. now i want to see the tamarind. i'm blessed i am very blessed to have a lot of, like yourself helping to support the rose yeah and get the word i out. love that i love that so that is chris noble you guys thank you chris you're welcome, Holly. Thank you. Okay, don't hang up. All right. <laughs> okay.